Anyway, otherwise, I've written songs, like many people in the music scene, you know, songwriters, they write songs about the place they work in, you know? And uh, I've written songs about the place that I work in. <coughs> and people criticize you for it. They say, Dave, write a song about the first fuck you ever had. Set it to a G and a C chord and make it sound nice. Make one for Triple J. Write a song about blowing your school teacher. Put a lot of foul words in it and it will excite children out there in Australia. But anyway, if you write songs about your workplace and you are a farmer out in a paddock staring at the ass end of a mule, looking at the the beautiful flanks of that fucking mule day after day for so long, <laughs> plowing your fields of marijuana. And the scent, the pollen comes to you and you begin to see the flanks of that mule in a very positive way. <laughs> and you channel that sweet vision into a song. <laughs> called I fucked my mule out in the paddock today and they play it all over local ABC because that's what the farmers listen to and they love to hear songs about the girlfriends you know but in reality if you're a farmer you come home you've been staring at the arse end of a fucking mule all day it's it's shitting in front of you all day it's fucking blowing phlegm out of its stinking brain nose with its fucking brain coming out into your face. You go home to your woman, you say, where's my fucking tea, bitch? She gives you your tea. You say, right, while I'm eating this slop you've made for me, I want you to blow me. Right? And she says, fuck you. Hits the road. You go to your room, you get out your fucking, your fucking axe, you get to the table and you start chipping out the lyrics to a song. First words, my woman left me. People love that shit. My woman fucking left me. Everybody eats that stuff up. But unfortunately, I have never had such a, uh, an occupation that is approved by people in the music business as to be a fucking farmer staring at the ass end of a mule all day so much that you want to put your penis between its fucking hairy flanks and shag it at lunchtime while you're eating your fucking roll of weak old bread with nothing in it, right? I've never had that sort of glamorous life. I have been, unfortunately, all my life a musician, right? And I have struggled hard. John Howard would love me. I've struggled as a small businessman to open my corner shop, right? My little fucking part of the world, this six foot fucking square of stinking carpet you would never have in a barn if you wanted to fuck a mule on it. You would not have it there. Because the mule would not shit on stuff like this, right? All over Australia I've walked around this kind of fucking place and I've sung about my world, right? And my world is that bit of stinking fucking carpet, right? And through the use of meditation, through sheer brilliance, you know, through the, the timing in my life, the inspiring people I've met, a little bit of dope, a little bit of beer, a little bit of fear, a little bit of plain stupidness. I imagine things all the time while I'm here on this stinking bit of carpet. I imagine I'm a farmer fucking a mule, for instance, you know. What would that be like? Would people like to hear somebody talk about that? But anyway, anyway, I still get the calls from people. Why don't you, why don't you uh, be like Missy Higgins or something? Or uh, whoever's around, uh, why don't you be like Pete Murray? Why don't you look like a footballer and play music that footballers would like, you know? Don't forget about the fucking mule, Dave. Don't talk about it. Sorry, already have, right? 
So I've written songs. Rock and roll is where I hide. What a fucking classic. The stars, baby, the stars. I promised people what I'm going to do. I'm going to release your soul. You're just too hip, baby. You want to be loved. I have written songs about drugs, you know, drugs for old people, drugs for young people. What other fucking songs have I written? Tell me your song I've written. I've written so many I've fucking forgotten them all. They're all fuck Warren Oates. I wrote a song about a fucking actor and people always say, who is Warren Oates, Dave? You are mad, Dave. Who is Warren Oates? Does he act in movies with Ben Affleck? <laughs> you are mad, Dave. You are fucking mad. They're being positive, of course, in this crazy world we live in. I've written many songs. My favourite song involved me fucking a mule, but I've been working on that for years, you know. <laughs> I have to get the video together. <laughs> so hard to set up the camera, get it rolling, right, frame it with the mule's ass, and then get me astride the fucking mule, and, uh, you know, then the mule moves, of course, you know, so I'm working on that one. I wrote a great song I haven't recorded yet. It's about uh, Don Bradman. You know Don Bradman? You have Don Bradman Avenue in Adelaide. But I found a case of his letters that he wrote to Ribald magazine, which uh, you men know is a, uh, a men's uh, entertainment magazine of the 70s, where they wrote their fantasies to uh, Ribald magazine. And uh, I didn't want to publish them, so I'm only allowed to talk about it, right? I can't. I have it in my possession. I want to give it to a museum. But um, anyway, Don Bradman was playing in Melbourne in uh, 19 fucking 02 or something. <laughs> And uh, he was so famous, he was like Pete Murray of his day, you know, he's like, he cannot go out in the daytime, so they had to open up things at night for him. And Don got up, got, got up, had a creditable wank, cup of tea, and, and phoned the Prime Minister and said, I wish to go to the Melbourne Museum to see Far Lap. They said sure, and they shut they shut the streets of Melbourne so Don could the Don could walk through the town to uh, the museum. Nobody's allowed to look at him. Look the other way. The Don is coming. The Don goes uh, through the museum, sees some fucking Aboriginal knickknacks. He sees a few paintings of dead people. He's not interested. He, it's all dark. People are not looking at him. Still, he turns the corner into this room, this beautifully lit room, he comes, he turns the corner and, and there he is, he espies the gleaming buttocks of Fallat. <laughs> the dawn is in his cricket gear, flaming youth of Australia, the hopes of the world upon him and the, the thought crosses his, his mind and he, he thinks, what? Of what what magic could be made if I, Don Bradman, future Sir Don Bradman, could sit thusly and insert my penis into far laps, beautiful flanks. Imagine those poor fools out there in Australia. If somebody videoed it and consented that future Prime Minister of Australia feel us fly. If they could if they could see me fucking far laugh, you know. Those dumb people out there. I could crush their dreams with my hard cock. Right? But I'm working on that song, it's uh, difficult to get the music flowing through it. But it ends up with, the, you know that song by Eric Clapton, Layla, it ends up with this piano bit, rather like Martin Scorsese loves to blow people up, you know. Beautiful, uh, elegaic music happening. Don goes back and writes his letter to Ribald. You know, blah, blah, fucked, uh, far left, blah, blah. And then had a cup of tea and a creditable housemaid's wink at the boarding house he was staying with in Fitzroy, right? But anyway.